Docker containers and Kubernetes. What are they? Why do you need them? And how to use them? All coming up in this very video. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. In the last video, I explained the differences between bare metal servers, virtual machines, and containers. We also understood why each of them is needed, pros and cons of each of them, and what are the use cases for each of these. And during the last video, I also explained the term hypervisor. type of hypervisors and how hypervisors enable the implementation of containers in case you missed watching this important previous video the link is shared in the description box and in the i button above and now in this video we will take a step forward and understand what are docker containers and why we need kubernetes and friends with this video we will finish our section 2.2.4 describe application hosting options including azure web apps containers and virtual machines so let's begin with understanding why we need docker only once you understand this concept you would truly appreciate this technology and friends to help us understand this concept we would need this guy and we will call him joy so he is a python programmer who is been tasked to create a data processing app in python and we will call this app data proof and being a cool programmer he always keep his local machine or laptop up to date so for now he is running python 3.11 on his machine and you can consider this as a development environment now as expected he created the data proof app within couple of weeks and for this he used some dependencies and some configuration files so far life is good and everything looks fine data proof app is working as expected in the development environment and now it is time to move this to test environment the entire code along with the dependencies and configuration file are now moved to the test environment and the testing starts and just when our cool programmer was having lunch the testing team called him to report that his code breaks so now when mr joy checks he finds that this is because the test environment is running on the python version 3.10 but no worries our cool programmer joy does some minor adjustment in the code and voila the code is working again data proof app is once again working as expected The testing team was right on track. They did some rigorous testing on this data proof app and now comes the final day, the day when the code meets the production environment. So now the code is deployed in the production and the help broke. The entire application fell flat. Nothing is working. Customers are mad and our Mr. Joy is not in joy anymore. And friends to his utter surprise he finds that the production environment is still running on the Python version 2.7. and his code is nowhere close to be compatible with this obsolete version of python and friends this is a age old fight between the dev team and the operations team we all have been there the dev team in our case represented by mr joy and the ops team led by mr james both blame each other the dev team blames the ops team for not keeping the production environment up to date and the ops team blames the dev team for not creating backward compatible code and this fight is not going to settle down anytime soon so let mr joy and mr james settle the issue but for now we can move ahead and we can meet solomon hikes so friends mr solomon hikes is the founder of docker he is also chief technology officer and chief architect in docker and friends this guy here came up with the brilliant idea of packaging everything with the code the dependency files the code files the configuration file virtually everything that the code would need to run and this brilliant idea not only revolutionized the development part but also the deployment or the operations part and the reason is very simple all the code files all the dependencies all the configuration file and everything else is now packaged into one single packet so any environment be it production development or testing environment everywhere the code will run and behave exactly the same and in case you want to understand more on docker directly from solomon hikes this is the documentation and here you can understand why the docker exists what docker does and lot of other information is given here a very cool video directly from this guy here is also available please read out this documentation the link is shared in the description box and now let's understand some of the advantages of docker containers so since you are packaging everything together you need to run your code as a single bundle this makes docker's platform independent and of course it is truly build once and run anywhere 
and there is one more good impact of dockers this makes the life of mr joy once again really good now friends please understand for easy 900 exam this is more than enough and i will surely create more videos on dockers containers and kubernetes in the coming times but if you really want to understand few more critical concepts like difference between docker and containers then please keep watching the upcoming very important section of this video And now before we jump on to the Kubernetes, I want to bring out a very important distinction here on which so many people keeps getting stumbled upon and that is the difference between Docker and container. So once you package your code, dependencies, configuration files and runtime engine, you can create a Docker image which is sometimes also known as container image. But please pay attention. At this point, your application is not running. You have just created the image of your application. So when you run the Docker image or the container image, this creates a container. So you can say that container is the actual running instance of a Docker image. And friends, all this is achieved by a special file called Docker file. So this Docker file basically has the information about what application needs to run. It has the information about dependencies, configuration, runtime, etc. And the best way to visualize this Docker file is like a jar file for your Java application. And now let's see how Microsoft Azure defines containers. And this is the documentation where you can understand what is a container. It says that just as shipping industries use physical containers to isolate different cargoes, for example, to transport in ships and trains, software development technologies increasingly use an approach called containerization. A standard package of software known as container bundles an application code together with the related configuration files, libraries and with the dependencies required to run the application. This allows developers and IT pros to deploy applications seamlessly across environments. And you can learn a lot on this documentation. The link is shared right in the description box. Some key points on Azure container instances. So a container is a self-contained package or a bundle of software that includes everything it needs to run. It includes code, runtime, libraries, packages, etc. Also, Azure Container Instances offer the fastest and the simplest way to run a container in Azure without having to manage any virtual machine or adopt to any additional services. And friends, please remember this very important point that Azure Container Instances are platform as a service or PaaS model. And this is because you will get some questions in the AZ-900 exam that will ask you whether Azure Container Instances are infrastructure as a service or platform as a service or software as a service. In that case, always go for platform as a service. And further it says Azure Container Instances allow you to upload your containers and then the service will run the containers for you. Okay, so now that you understand what is Docker, what is Docker Images, differences between Docker Image and Container, Let's now quickly touch upon Kubernetes. But friends, for now, we won't get into the details of Kubernetes because Kubernetes is not part of the AZ-900 slippers. But it is so commonly used with the concepts like dockers and containers, I thought it would make perfect sense to at least give you an overview. So according to this website, Kubernetes.io, Kubernetes are also known as KHS is an open source system for automating deployment, scaling and management of containerized applications. I have left the link for this documentation in the description box so that you can do some self study. But most definitely I will also explain what is Kubernetes. So let's say that you have built an application and you are ready with your Docker images and want to start deploying these containers on servers. So friends, what happens is that until the application is small, the things are under your control. But as the application grows and it becomes bigger and bigger, it will be nearly impossible for you to manually maintain and manage each of these containers. And that's why to efficiently manage all these containers, you need Kubernetes. Now let me give you an example so that you better understand. Assume that you have to cook meal only for yourself. 
I guess it's quite manageable unless you are as bad as me in cooking. But now consider that it's your birthday and you're throwing a party and you're expecting 50 to 100 friends to show up. And now the things will change. It's not easy to cook for so many people. You have to take care of so many things. Not possible, at least not for me. So what's the easy solution? Well, you decide to throw a party in a restaurant. You just go to the hotel or the restaurant. Here you just tell them what would you like to eat and how many people are coming. And that's all what you need to do, rest all is taken care by the hotel or the restaurant. In the same manner, you can think of managing containers with Kubernetes is just like going to the restaurant and giving your order. So rather than you handling all the containers individually, you tell Kubernetes that you want to deploy containers and Kubernetes will handle everything for you. And I guess this much of introduction on Kubernetes is just good enough for you to start with. So let's very quickly summarize what have we learned in this party team. We learned what is Docker, what is Docker images, advantages of Docker containers, Docker versus containers and finally we touched upon Kubernetes and that marks the completion of the section 2.2.4 and in the next video we will start with the section 2.2.5 describe virtual networking including the purpose of Azure virtual networks, Azure virtual subnets, pairing, Azure DNS, VPN gateway and express route. I hope you learned something new today. So please do not forget to like and share our videos and subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next video. Till then stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.